About some time last year, I got into fountain pens. I started off like many people uh, in using some cheap fountain pens, uh, Chinese pens, uh, platinum preppy, and I worked my way, uh, Lamy Safari obviously, and I worked my way slowly towards a point where I wanted to try out what, what a gold nibbed pen would feel like. So uh, this being kind of uh, the lead up to the Christmas period, I think lots of people uh, might find this video useful if they wanted to get uh, the first or the beginner gold nibbed pen for a friend or significant other family member and so on uh, for Christmas. So I don't have all of the uh, beginner kind of gold knit pens at my disposal. I am just but uh, like a normal user like yourself and I actually buy all my pens and I kind of test them out and use them. So I don't have, uh, just glancing through some uh, shopping websites like jet pens uh, I'm not affiliated to jet pens or anything like that. Uh, I think I'm kind of missing probably the most famous pen out there, which is the Lamy 2000. Uh, I don't really intend to buy the Lamy 2000 unless there's a fantastic deal that I come across. Uh, but these are the pens that I have. Uh, in kind of the budget or the beginner gold nipped pens. And from the left, we have the uh, Pilot E95S or the Elite. We have the custom, sorry, the Platinum uh, 3776. We have the Pilot Falcon. We have the Pilot Van Vanishing Point. We have the Sailor Pro Gear Slim. And finally, we have the Pilot Custom 74. So I'm going to be going through each of these pens and kind of come up with some of my conclusions um, and maybe even kind of end the video with my pick in terms of which pen I would choose. Uh, but first of all, just look at the, the specs, right? Um, or rather some, some basic information. So looking at the, the pens, uh, Pilot E95S is the cheapest uh, pen um, of this group at about 136 US dollars. Uh, vanishing, I think the next one would be the Vanishing Point, um, which is about 156 dollars. Afterwards, you would get the Pilot Custom 74 at about 160 US dollars. Uh, you would then uh, go into uh, platinum 3776 at 176 and lastly at a kind of a dead heat the pilot falcon at 180 and the pro gear slim at uh, 180 as well and of course i'm just comparing the kind of the standard finishes of the pens right so for a lot of these pens which i'm going to speak about um, when i speak about each pen individually they come in lots and lots of finishes, uh, trims, uh, special editions, limited editions, and so on, which will cost these prices to kind of not be valid, right? I just picked kind of the cheapest pen uh, off the range to kind of put in this table. And I um, wanted to give you an idea in terms of the nib range as well. So don't hold me to this uh, list of nib, uh, nibs because, you know, I, I just pulled them out uh, the best I could, I might have made a mistake um, for one or two of these. So the E95S um, has a fairly modest nib selection at EF, extra fine, fine and medium. Vanishing Point um, has uh, EF, fine, medium, broad and stub. Pro Gear Slim has EF, fine, fine, medium, medium, broad, uh, MS, which is music and zoom nib. Custom 74 has probably the longest or the most diverse nib range at uh, 
and I'm not going to read all this out, right? So they have quite a significant uh, range of nibs to choose from. The next uh, pen that has quite a lot of nibs to choose from would be from the Platinum 3776 line. And again, not every nib would be available for every finish, right? So I have to put that disclaimer out there. And last but not least, the Falcon. Uh, most of their nibs are soft in a way because of how the Falcon nib is is designed. So they have soft extra fine, soft fine, soft medium, and soft broad. So with that out of the way, let's just take out uh, the first pen, which is um, my trusty, which which was actually my first gold nib fountain pen, right? So which is the E95S. So, um, and it's probably timely as well that I revisit this pen because it's been some time since I did that quick look. So it's a very classic pen, right? Uh, mine wasn't bought new. I bought it secondhand uh, off uh, eBay, I, I, you know, and mine isn't the US version. Mine is actually the Japanese version, which is why it's it's labeled as Elite down here. If you have the E95S, there'll be an E rather than the whole word Elite. It is a super light pen and it's very short uh, when capped, I mean, when closed. All this changes when you open it up and you get a very decent length, right? When using um, every day. It comes with, uh, and mine has that ring which is loose. It should come with a, a converter, right? In most cases, it'll be the Con 40 because as you can see, there isn't much space uh, to fit in a larger converter. And, you know, my thoughts about this pen is, um, you know, it being probably kind of the most affordable pen out there um, in terms of gold nib. It is a fantastic choice to kind of start off with. The only kind of comment I would say is it might look a little bit um, classic looking, right? It's not, you know, if you were to give this pen to someone who was probably younger or who appreciates a more funky design, a more uh, a pen with a little bit more style, a little bit more pizzazz, this, this might not be the right pen, right? This pen would suit probably someone who works in the office or who appreciates like kind of a more classic style of pen. Right, I'll do a writing with this uh, shortly. Next pen which I'm going to bring out is uh, my Vanishing Point slash Capless. So, um, first thing that you will note about this pen is the weight, right? So basically the Capless is made out of an, an alloy or brass, if I'm not wrong. So basically there is a little bit of heft when, when holding the pen. The other thing and the other point which a lot of YouTubers, a lot of reviewers actually mention is, you know, when the pen is um, kind of held, right? Some people might find this grip uncomfortable. The, you know, Pilot has actually done a little bit of cut out on the clip to kind of make this the ideal spot for you to, to do your writing. And some people find uh, the fact that you have to kind of lock your fingers into this position to be a little bit uncomfortable. I don't have that problem because occasionally I might even hold my index finger on top like so, I know, right this way. So um, that's one consideration when getting this pen. The other consideration uh, would be the weight, like I mentioned, uh, and you know, the fact that it's kind of a reverse pen. So basically it's, um, the clip is here and then when you put it down into your pocket, I probably wouldn't recommend putting it into a pocket, but uh, um, that's that's kind of my, my feeling about this pen. And for someone who, especially a student, uh, who wants to kind of have a handy way to kind of deploy a fountain pen when taking quick notes and so on, this is a, this is a great choice. The other thing about this pen is it's the only pen out of this whole group that has an 18 karat uh, uh, nib. You also, 
another point which I just kind of remembered. Uh, be careful when buying this pen, right? especially off sites which aren't very detailed in their descriptions. Uh, there is a version of this pen that has an alloy, they call it a special alloy nib. And that one's actually a steel nib, right? And you might be thinking you scored a great deal off a vanishing point, uh, but it, end, it might end up to be to come with a steel nib. And ironically enough, the steel or the alloy nib is coated in gold. It has a gold plating. You might think that it's, it's gold, but it's actually not, right? The next pen which I wanted to speak about um, and I'm trying to go via with from price range um, you know lowest to highest is the Custom 74. Um, this pen probably has kind of the largest number of recommendations for a beginner fountain pen right and if you go to you know, watch YouTube videos from Goulet pens and, and sites like that. They, uh, you know, Brian Goulet always says that this is, you know, one of his first gold uh, fountain pens that he used. I think it's a great pen, especially for, you know, it, it, I mean, if you like something that looks very modern and very, uh, you know, interesting, right, you can get one of these uh, transparent finishes and it makes the pen look very modern right uh, in terms of size I would say it's a, it's a good size you know it's probably just a little bit on the small side for me but I it's still usable unposted uh, I don't really post my pens but uh, I think it's a decent size the only kind of uh, you know comment that I would give for this pen is, you know, uh, you might want to consider getting um, or looking around whether or not you can get, uh, you know, a pen that has kind of a, a, a bigger, bigger nib, right? My only gripe with this pen is that the number five nib, I'm trying to get this to focus, that the Custom 74 comes with is, to me, is slightly small, right? So that's uh, that's probably my only gripe for this pen. Otherwise, it's a very good pen. It comes with the, the Con 70, right, which is a fantastic converter. Lots of people make compl complaints about this converter that it's difficult to clean out, right? What one thing you can try if you find that it's difficult to clean out is you can actually unscrew uh, the converter totally. Right, I'm going to attempt to do this like so, right? And then you can actually clean out this pen pretty thoroughly, right? So uh, easy to fill just by pushing this button. Quite a large capacity, about probably one milliliter. Uh, and it's, I, I feel it's, a, it's probably the best converter system out there, right? The next pen which I wanted to speak about and again going by price is actually the um, I mean the Platinum 3776 and uh, in my opinion you know it's you know lots of people actually compare these two pens the Custom 74 and the 3776 I would kind of put the 3776 into a higher category of pen right so uh, and I'll explain uh, shortly. First of all, the pen is, is very short. It's, it's shorter than the 3776, but sorry, it's, the 3776 is shorter than the, the Custom 74, right? However, um, I find that, you know, since I'm going to be using this pen anyway, right, I normally post it and the, the problem kind of goes away, right? Otherwise, uh, it's a very comfortable pen when posted as well. It's not too long, not too short, and so on. And the reason why I say that the 3776 is kind of a different class of pen, right, is because of the size of the nib, right? If you look at the size of the nib and you compare this with that Custom 74, you'll notice that the, the nib is, is 
one size bigger, right? In fact, the nib is kind of, and I'm trying to manip manipulate all the other pens down here. I have a another Pilot pen down here that has a number 10 nib. So Pilot nibs go from 3, 5, 10, 15, and 30. Uh, if you kind of look at the 3776 uh, nib compared to a number 10 Pilot nib, they're roughly the same size. So what this means is you are actually essentially getting, um, this is the Pilot Bamboo by the way, which I'll review in another video. Essentially you are getting uh, you know, a nib from a pen uh, category that's one size higher, higher if you were to go uh, and compare with other um, other pens out there right so for example uh, if you wanted to get equivalent size nib you would have to go to perhaps the Pilot 912 which is a $200 pen right so I think it's great value if you value nib size and performance right the downside to this pen, I would feel, is uh, besides the, the size, which is slightly small, is the converter that the, the that Platinum uses. And it's not the actual performance of the converter, which is the kind of the problem. It's the, the fact that the converter doesn't fit super well. So it, it actually is kind of loose, even though I, I try to squeeze in the converter uh, totally. And the pen would... I'm not sure whether you can pick this up. The pen would rattle, um, you know, occasionally if you're kind of uh, using it. But otherwise, uh, getting those kind of gripes out of the way, right? Um, I feel that the 3776 is probably the, the unique pen out of the whole group that I'm talking about today. And it's a great choice um, for, for first fountain, fountain pen with a gold nib. The next pen, which I haven't reviewed yet, which is actually my wife's uh, Pro Gear Slim. Uh, again, disclaimer, Pro Gear Slim comes in lots and lots of finishes. This is, I uh, can't really remember the name of the finish. Uh, it's probably like the Dragon uh, Sky or something like that finish. Uh, so that price which I posted, which is about the 180 US dollar mark is probably for the standard colors. If you wanted to get a special finish like this or special color, probably would have to pay $200 or more, right? So that's the first point. Second point is this pen is very small, right? If you were to kind of compare this with my Elite, it's not much longer than the Elite when, when closed. And even when, um, when posted, the Elite ends up to be you know, which is a, actually kind of the same size when it's closed, ends up to be slightly longer or roughly the same size, right? So it's a very small pen, the Pro Gear Slim. It's probably more suited, I feel, for ladies, uh, which is probably why it's my wife's pen and not mine. However, when post after posting the pen, it is very comfortable uh, in, in the hand, right? The nib is again very very small right so i mean i'll just bring up the custom 74 to kind of show you it is very very close to the custom 74 uh, nib size um, otherwise um, and we'll get to it when we do the brief writing sample it is a very pleasant writer right the other point that i would um, probably want to highlight is the converter it has an extremely small capacity. I might be wrong, but I think it's half a milliliter. Um, however, the, the converter is decently built and it's it's kind of attached pretty solidly. So, I mean, I think it's, that's one, one thing you have to kind of take note about the Pro, Ge Pro Gear Slim. It's a very small pen, um, but it writes very well. And the last pen, which Again, it's a personal favorite of mine. If you were to kind of look through this selection of pens down here, I think that the 3776 by Platinum and the Falcon would be my kind of the picks 
of this bunch. And the whole reason for why I am saying that for the Falcon is the nib. Um, if you're getting into calligraphy or writing, or if, you, if you're a writer in any way, right, this nib is probably the way to go, right? I have the soft fine down here and it writes beautifully, right? With a tiny bit of feedback. Size-wise, again, it's not the biggest pen. However, you know, if when you post it, which I probably do most of the time with this pen, it's fine, right? It has a very nice section as well, a very comfortable section. Uh, in terms of filling system, it also uses the CON40. So I'm going to do a little bit of writing right now. Let me raise the table a little bit. And starting off, I think that's the probably the good uh, height. I'm going to start off with the Elite or the E95S. So this is the Pilot E95S uh, or Elite. And this one is in fine. So it's a I would say it's a beautiful fine nib, right? Smooth, um, not much feedback, and you know, in terms of actual writing, uh, I think it's a brilliant nib. Um, it's a very classy pen, like I mentioned earlier on, and you know, if you value, uh, you know, a very fine line, uh, if you value smoothness, I think this is a kind of a great choice. Right? I'm not going to write, do a lot of writing. Um, and it's a very comfortable pen. Again, following uh, the sequence which I used earlier on, I'm going to pick up the vanishing point. And this is the pilot. By the way, all of the pens have been inked with Waterman Mysterious Blue. Um, sometimes called the capless if you buy it from Japan. And this is also the fine nib. First thing you will notice, this fine is lays down much more ink compared to the E95S, right? So it's, it feels softer, right? Um, right, I, I don't think there's any line variation or anything like that, but it definitely feels wetter uh, than the Elite. Right, so we'll just try out the lead again. I mean, definitely a little bit drier and a little bit finer compared to this, uh, the vanishing point. How, however, it's a very smooth nib, right? And um, very convenient, like I mentioned in my earlier points. Next, next pen uh, that I'm going to be looking at will be the Custom 74. And I like fine, so basically this is also fine. And, you know, it it is pretty fine. It is a nice feeling nib that's smooth with, again, a tiny bit of feedback. Pretty similar to the E95S in terms of feel, right? And looking at the next pen, which is the 3776. And I'm not sure whether this will be picked up by the microphone, right? The 3776 is unique in terms of its pencil -y feel, right? And this is the soft fine. So you can definitely feel feedback. Uh, it's not unpleasant though. And for the soft fine, you can actually do tiny bit of line variation, right? I love this nib. In fact, 
uh, and I didn't speak about this earlier on, right? If I were to kind of recommend uh, nip, a, a nip choice for all these pens, I would say for the capless, the fine would be perfect. For the E95S and the Custom 74, I would think go with the medium is my recommendation. Again, it's personal choice. And for the 3776, definitely the soft fine. And if you like really broad nips, go for the, go for the music nib. So the next pen would be the Pro Gear Slim. And the Pro Gear Slim is actually, I'm just going to say PGS. This nib, um, if I'm not wrong, it's actually the medium fine. And it's kind of the in-between nib, right? So in terms of feeling of smoothness, it's in between the, the Pilots and the 3776. It is feedbacky, right? But the feedback is not as great as the Platinum. Uh, it's kind of in the middle between these two pens, right? It's, it's a very pleasant writer and a very reliable writer as well, right? And the last pen would be uh, the Falcon. And this one is in soft fine. And, you know, maybe I'm biased, probably biased. Um, nip wise, I think this nip is is probably one notch above the 3776. I mean, size notwithstanding, because it is a very small nip uh, compared to the 3776, right? Short, I mean, lengthwise. But I actually prefer the Falcon in terms of how it feels, right? And the softness, the f softness for sure. You definitely can get a little bit of, of line variation with this nib. So um, that was my very quick, or rather not so quick, uh, this video is getting into to half an hour already. I hope this helped in terms of uh, my opinions uh, regarding these uh, beginner uh, gold nipped fountain pens. Uh, and I hope it will be useful when you're doing your shopping during this Christmas period. Uh, I am recording this uh, just before Christmas in, in the month of December in the year 2021. Uh, I hope you found this video useful. Let me know your thoughts and I will see you in the next video. Take care. Bye-bye.